Good morning and welcome to Rice of the Baptist Church as we gather together for our morning service of worship. If you're joining us online as a visitor, we give you a very warm welcome. And of course, we welcome all our normal RBC folks in your homes. Uh, let's pray that God really meets with us this morning as we gather uh, to worship him. Why don't we begin our service this morning by turning to him in prayer. Let's pray uh, together. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that this morning again we can come and worship you. And although we are not gathered within our usual church building, we thank you that we still are the church and that you are God our Father. We come in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and we pray that by your Spirit we might worship in spirit and in truth. So come, Holy Spirit, descend upon us and bless us. For Jesus' sake. Amen. We're going to sing our first hymn this morning. It's that modern adaptation of The Lord's My Shepherd, the 23rd Psalm. Uh, if you'd like to stand with me uh, or just remain seated in your living rooms or wherever as we worship God together, let's sing The Lord's My Shepherd. In a moment, we are going to hear from Lucy, our children's worker. But before that, um, can I just tell you about a very exciting project that we are going to launch in the very near future. Our Alpha Lockdown course is going to start on Thursday, the 21st of May at 8 p.m. 
Maybe you've thought about coming to an alpha course, but you've never had time. Maybe you've not really wanted to meet with a, a large group of folks. Maybe you're just busy at work and it's just not been a, a possibility for you. But now in lockdown, maybe you've got a bit more time and alpha may be something that interests you. We would love you to come on our uh, alpha lockdown course. Let me remind you again, Thursday, the 21st of May, it begins at 8 p.m. There are going to be eight sessions. You only need to come to the first one. If you don't enjoy it, don't come back. But if you come to the first, the second, the third, why not do the whole course? You can sign up on our church website. And as soon as we have your details, we will inform you about the Zoom link that you'll need to use to uh, join us on the 21st of May at 8 p.m. Lockdown Alpha, why not invite a friend? Hope to see you there. And now I'm gonna hand over to Lucy Newton. Thanks, Lucy. Good morning, it's great to be out and about this morning doing a bit of exercise. As you can see, I'm at the running track and looking forward to a bit of fresh air. Maybe you like going running and racing. Maybe you like watching it on the TV. I'm going to show you now some pictures of some famous racers. See if you can work out who they are. I'm going to come back to who they are in a moment. I'm going to read you a passage now from the Bible, from the book of Hebrews. It says, so we have many people of faith around us. Their lives tell us what faith means. So let us run the race before us and never give up. We should remove anything from our lives that gets in the way. We should remove the sin that so easily catches us. Let us fix our eyes upon Jesus. He is the one who began our faith and he made our faith perfect. Jesus, suffered death on the cross but he accepted the shame of the cross as if it were nothing he did this because of the joy that God put before him and he is now seated at the right hand side of God you can find that in Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 now I might look this morning like I'm all ready to go for a run out on the track dressed in the right equipment but for those of you who know me well know that I'm not one that would go out running. The only place I generally run is up the stairs when I've forgotten something. The passage in Hebrews talks to us about being a Christian and running a race. We looked at this passage with some children last week and asked them some questions. We asked them what they thought it meant to fix our eyes upon Jesus. They said, to fix your eyes upon Jesus, it means you can keep your faith in God strong. Your whole life should follow God. I also asked them what they thought it would be, what would be the prize for winning the Christian race, for running and taking part. They said our prize as Christians will be eternal life, life in heaven, a new heaven and a new earth, forever with God. We also talked about obstacles, the hurdles in our life that get in the way, the things that stop us running a Christian race. We thought about temptations, we thought about friends that distracted us. When I was at school, at high school, I wasn't much of an athlete. I did enjoy running and I was asked one year to take part in a race. I was asked to take part in the hurdles. I was fairly fast and I was good at jumping. There was just one problem. I was scared. I was afraid of hitting the hurdle and falling over and crashing to the floor. This stopped me taking part in a race that I could have run. As Christians, are there things that stop us? Are there obstacles in our way? We're going to look back now at those photos I showed you earlier to look at some people who do race. Now, I know they were a bit tricky, some of them, but hopefully you managed to guess who one of them was. Eric Little, the black and white photo, he was an Olympic runner in the 1920s, but his favoured race was going to be held on a Sunday. Eric was a strong Christian and he didn't want to run on a Sunday. So instead he chose to take part in another race. For him, being a Christian was more important than his running. He put his faith in Jesus first and later on in life became a missionary in China. 
Lewis Hamilton is a Formula One racing driver who regularly speaks out about his faith and the importance of prayer. He knows that the sport that he races in is really dangerous, but through his faith it helps him focus away from the fear of crashing. Derek Redmond, he was an Olympic runner and there he is taking part in the Olympics in Barcelona in 1992. Some of you may have heard about him in an assembly at some point. He was running in the 400 metres when he felt an injury in his leg, which meant he had to stop running. He couldn't continue to try and win that medal. A man came out of the crowd and helped him complete the race. He didn't come in first, but he did finish. He finished with the help of his father to get him over the finishing line. You may be feeling fearful at the moment, but if you remember to fix your eyes upon Jesus, to listen to the encouraging words of Christian friends, to spend time in prayer, your Father God is always with you, ready to carry you when you're in times of trouble and help you to conquer your fears. So let us come to God in prayer this morning as we think about our country, our community, our local church fellowship. Conscious today that later uh, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson is uh, to make uh, a speech to the nation with regard to uh, the government's ongoing response to the coronavirus. Equally uh, conscious that yesterday as a nation we celebrated VE Day and uh, these things will uh, feature in our prayers as well as praying for members of our church community and Ricelip too. So let us pray. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that you allow us to come to you in prayer. We ask that you would hear our prayers as we pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we think of yesterday's celebrations, uh, the VE, day celebrations when we remember not in a triumphant uh, over joyful way but carefully solemnly uh, we remember lord the uh, the conclusion of the second world war and the uh, surrender of those who were opposed to us we continue to remember those who bear the scars of that conflict, those who live with the memories of loved ones lost, and those in their senior years who went to fight for the peace and freedom of this nation. We give you thanks, Lord, for their, their willingness and their courage. We thank you for the peace we enjoy. Lord, we pray at this particular time for our nation uh, facing this COVID virus. And we're conscious today that uh, the Prime Minister will make a statement later uh, outlining the future direction of uh, the government's uh, suggested policy for tackling this virus and for getting us as a nation uh, back to work and back to uh, normal life again, whatever normal will mean in the coming days. Give wisdom, Lord, to our leaders at this time. We thank you for those who continue to serve us in the NHS through the caring services, through the practical services that we uh, need so desperately, the, the, the shops that are open, the refuse collectors, the folks who keep our community clean, tidy, safe. We pray, Lord, for wisdom in terms of our schools, that the government would make the right choices in terms of allowing children back into education at the right time. And we pray, Lord, especially for those who are ill uh, and are suffering with this COVID virus again. We pray equally for those who are receiving other treatments and are anxious not to catch the virus. Lord God, we pray as a fellowship that you would continue to help us to love, to care and to support one another at this strange and difficult time. May we know your help, your enabling. Merciful God, hear our prayers 
for Jesus' sake. Amen. We're going to sing our second song of worship this morning and Barry is going to lead us as we sing together Bless the Lord, O My Soul, better known to some of us as 10,000 Reasons. Uh, The words will appear on your screen as usual if you'd like to stand and sing or just remain seated and enjoy this uh, Christian lyric this morning. Uh, let's, uh, Let's worship God together.
I'm grateful to uh, Michael Hayward, who is going to read for us this morning, and I'm going to hand over to Michael, who has pre-recorded this reading for us. Thank you, Michael. Over to you. Number 6, 22 to 27, The Priestly Blessing. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons to bless the people of Israel with this special blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favour and give you his peace. Whenever Aaron and his sons bless the people of Israel in my name, I myself will bless them. Uh, thank you, Michael, for reading that passage of scripture for us from Numbers chapter 6. So this is the last in our short series where we've been looking at some of the one another verses in the Bible. And in this final session, I want us to see the collective impact these one another verses and others uh, within the New Testament in particular uh, have, what their, what their overall aim is, the ultimate goal of this particular collection of verses. And I think their ultimate goal is to bless. That's the purpose. God's blessing us directly and each of us using our gifts, our talents, our uh, compassion, concern for one another uh, in order to bless each other. We often use that term in our everyday uh, conversations, don't we? Uh, the term bless. If someone sneezes without thinking, we say bless you. They sneeze again, we say bless you again. Some folks use the word bless as a term of endearment. Ah, oh, bless, they say bless. Far more seriously, on Friday, we celebrated the blessing of VE Day. We didn't gloat. We were respectful and reverential, but we remembered victory in Europe Day, the great blessing when our enemies unconditionally surrendered on the 8th of May, 1945, bringing the Second World War to an absolute conclusion. What a blessing that was to uh, our country, to Europe and other places beyond our seas. The Bible teaches that God wants us to enjoy good things. The Bible teaches that God is for us and not against us, that his heart is to bless our lives. When people curse others, they wish them harm. But when we seek to bless others, we want good things for them. And God wants good things for us. There are lots of verses in the Bible that uh, remind us of that fact. Uh, listen to one of them from Romans chapter 8. It says, God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? There's God's heart to graciously give us all things. Nowhere in the Bible will you come across the phrase, bless one another. But the idea is expressed again and again in a variety of different biblical statements. And our reading this morning is one example of one of those statements, uh, God's intent to bless. In the Jerusalem, the Jerusalem Library, uh, there is contained many amazing uh, artifacts from every age, every culture, every country in our world. Idols, icons, great pieces of art, priceless artifacts made of gold, silver, precious stones. But perhaps its most valuable object 
at least in the eyes of some, is just a tiny fragment of papyrus, of paper, written on it 15 words, just 15 words. It's the oldest surviving fragment of biblical literature in the world, some 2,700 years old. And it's this blessing. The blessing we've read, had read for us this morning. It translates those words, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. And I want to share with you just a few thoughts from these verses this morning. And the first thing I want to remind you of is the fact that blessing is God's idea. We see it here. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the people of God. It was God's intention, God's idea. He instructs the leaders to bless the people. Do you know, during my ministry, I've met lots of folks who think that God has got it in for them, wants to harm them, wants the worst for them, that he's some kind of uh, celestial police officer who wants to increase his, uh, his arrest tally, or he's a cruel and uncaring father who just wants to spite his children, to do them harm. God's a tyrant, they say. God's a, a despot. That's not what we see in the verses that we've read this morning. Hey folks, blessing is God's idea. And there are three distinct parts to the blessing that we read of in Numbers chapter 6. The first part is all about provision and protection. The Lord bless you and keep you. Uh, these are two of the most basic yet most important requirements in our life. They speak about God providing for us. We've seen the need for provision in these weeks. Folks queuing outside of supermarkets for, for hours in order to get their provisions. Folks even fighting with one another to make sure that they get what they think they need. The prayer of Jesus, give us today our daily bread. God wants to provide for us, but equally he wants to protect us. The Lord bless you and keep you. That idea of keeping us, keeping us safe, keeping us secure. The second aspect to this blessing uh, speaks to us about love and about grace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. God turning his face towards us speaks of his positive affirmation of us, wanting the best for us. You know, when folks turn their back to us, they want to reject us. They, they're, they're saying they don't want anything to do with us. This picture of God turning his face to us is, is one of, of warmth, of love, of attention. God's grace is something that is undeserved, but it's something that ought to be embraced by each and every one of us. And the third aspect to this blessing that I want us to see this morning is, uh, is that of receiving God's perfect peace. Listen to what it says again. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Some of us are troubled at the moment. We just like a bit of peace, a bit of calm, a bit of reassurance. God can give us that. 
We can know his peace. Jesus says, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. It's not a peace like the world gives. The peace that God gives passes human understanding. What loving parent wouldn't want these things for their children? Provision and protection, love and grace, peace in these troubled times. And these are the very things that I believe God wants for us too. That's what his blessing is all about. Let me finish with a, with a little story. My wife is a terrible sneezer. Please note, I did not say my wife is terrible, quite the contrary. I said my wife is a terrible sneezer. Let, let me explain. So when I sneeze, I tend to sneeze max three times. I max out after three sneezes, four is very unusual for me, not my wife. Six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, I kid you not. Now I know, telling you this story, I'm probably going to be in the shed tonight. Uh, too much information, she'll say to me. But you know, in the middle of the night when she starts sneezing, there are occasions when I'd rather be in the shed. Anyway, I've started the story, so I need to finish it. So she'll sneeze nine, ten, twelve, fourteen times. And when she starts, I'll say, bless you. And then she sneezes again, and I'll say, bless you. And then she sneezes again, and I'll say, bless you. But by the time we get to about sneeze number seven, number eight, I usually turn to her and say, okay, no more blessing. The blessings are over. That's not the heart of God. That's not what God says to us. When we come to him again and again, needing to know his blessing in our lives. Do you know what the Bible says? In the Gospel of John, in the first chapter, it says this, from the fullness of God's grace, we have all received one blessing after another. There's an old hymn used to be sung in churches years ago, says this, count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. It's the heart of God to bless us. And I hope that in these difficult days, as each one of us reaches out to this God who loves us, that we might experience in our lives, in our families, in our communities, the blessing of God. There's a song doing the rounds at the moment. It's called The Blessing. It was recorded uh, online by churches throughout the United Kingdom, uh, recording in their own rooms at home, and then it being uh, edited together. And I want to play it for you as our final piece of music uh, this morning. And... Um, Perhaps, as you listen to it, uh, you can reach out to God and say, Lord, bless me. Lord, bless my family. And following the, the piece of music this morning, that's the end of our service. Uh, we've got a short communion service uh, following this uh, music piece, The Blessing. If you want to stay, feel free. But it's a time when we're going to break bread and we're going to drink uh, from the communion cup. Uh, remembering Christ crucified for us. If you want to leave uh, during the song or after it's finished, then uh, we hope that you've enjoyed this morning and I hope that you'll be able to join us again next Sunday. It's great to, uh, to have this opportunity to speak into your lives and thank you so much for giving up of your time and for listening. Uh, it is appreciated. I hope the time wasn't wasted. Every blessing. Take care and stay well.
make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and keep you peace. Lord, Turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 down from heaven this isn't second guessing we know that we are protected may the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message grace and favors in your nature in your essence may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand Children, may His favor be upon you and 
Thank you for uh, staying on for this communion service. I hope that in your homes you have bread and wine ready so that later in the service when we pause to uh, share uh, bread and wine, you're able to physically uh, break the bread and pass it to one another and then share the cup together. But as we come to this meal, I've asked Andy Ingram if he would uh, lead our prayers in praying for the bread and the wine and I'm going to ask Andy to do that for us now. Good morning. It's a real privilege to have been asked to pray for communion this morning. I hope and pray that you're all doing well. And uh, thank you to all those people who've been behind the scenes putting these services and devotionals together. They've been a real blessing. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we have this weekend remembered and commemorated the end of hostilities in Europe towards the end of World War II, VE Day. We have probably all heard accounts of individual and collective sacrifice and bravery from soldiers of many nations which helped secure a great victory over the dark forces of Nazi tyranny. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice of that generation. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to gather virtually as a fellowship this morning to celebrate another great victory, the greatest victory in history, your victory over death and sin. The elements before us remind that this victory came at a great cost to you. It involved pain, the breaking of your body, the shedding of your holy blood, the anguish of separation from your Father. We can start to understand the motivation of a soldier fighting to protect their country, their families and their own lives. But Lord, you, the blameless, righteous Son of God, came down from the comfort of heaven to enter our cruel world, to bear the price of sins that were not your own amongst a generation where the majority would not celebrate your sacrifice, but would reject and mock it. That you should do this for us is true mercy, undeserved grace, and we thank you for that. In these turbulent times, I pray that the love and secure hope that flows from this act of remembrance from this meal can act as an anchor securing us to you to the knowledge that you always care for us love us and sacrificed your life to save and win our souls for eternity amen thank you and so we come to share this meal and I remind you of the words of the Apostle Paul when he writes to the Corinthians and says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night on which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread or drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We're going to listen to a song as we share this bread and wine together. The song will last for two or three minutes, so take your time and, and share with each other in your homes. And if you're uh, eating the bread and the wine, drinking the wine uh, on your own, then just enjoy the quietness of eating, drinking and reflecting on the sacrifice of Christ for us.
So thank you for joining us for our Sunday morning service and staying on for this short communion service. Uh, we're going to pray as we close. And can I just say, may God bless you um, during this week. If at any time you find yourself in need, please phone uh, the church office and we will do our best to get back to you as soon as we can and to support you if we are able. Let's pray together. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore. Amen.